I'm drawn to Legos. I can just lose track of everything else while I'm building. Sometimes that's a lot like research. Day to day, the things that you do are like building small sections of this bigger picture. And you don't sometimes see what that big picture is until it's all come together. I am studying uterine fibroids. They're a non-cancerous tumor of the uterus. It's a very understudied and underfunded field. By the age of 50, approximately 70% of women are expected to have fibroids. 25% of black women have fibroids by the age of 30. It has a devastating impact on quality of life and causes a lot of pain to the people who have them. And it can also cause issues with fertility. There currently is no cure for uterine fibroids. You can surgically remove them, but fibroids do regrow. So the only absolute cure to removing fibroids is a hysterectomy. My project is a good example of what happens when you don't have women in science. Women's health is often ignored when it's 70% of women affected by the disease. And I think we can do better. We should do better. When people tell me I can't do something, that's kind of a direct challenge. I've had people tell me I can't interpret my own data. The assumption that I didn't do any of the engineering or the math because I am a woman. My parents told me to ignore it, and so I do. <laughs> At least with this data set, and then I was looking at the literature. We talk about the diversity in STEM, and there needs to be a diversity in thought. When you listen to people who have a different experience and a different background, you start asking different questions, and you really start asking better questions, because you don't see everything the same. Especially for other students and trainees going into academia, I think it's really important to consider that you're in a place where it's fine to be who you are and it's accepted to be who you are. And if you are hiding who you are, are you also hiding your ideas that could really change the way that we think? <laughs>